Fall 2024 is upon us. And, you know, it might not be as good as Summer 2024, which is my longest video ever. But it is still a good season with a couple of popular bangers and a couple of hidden gems here and there. As per usual with these videos, I divide these animes into two. The first, those three episode rulers, so you gotta check out the first three episodes and decide then if you want to continue to watch the anime or not. And the must watch, where you have to watch the anime or not you'll be left out by the anime community. The first anime that I want to talk about is probably the most popular anime airing this season. Dan 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 follows Otakun and this girl Ayase somehow some way you know the girl goes to an abandoned hospital and the guy goes to like some abandoned tunnel and they both get cursed and they have superpowers now now I don't know where this anime is going yet as per the recording only three episodes has come out and it's been a bunch of just the action nonsense the thing with Dan Dan Dan, Dan it's a fun anime you know you're not there for the plot you're not there for you know, something that changed your morals and your view in life. You're just there for the great action scenes, a little bit of penis comedy, and a little, a little etchy, a little very tasteful etchy here and there. I personally really, really like Dan Dan Dan, and it's honestly might be one of the best animes th this year. And it's being done by Science Saru, and Science Saru, for the first three episodes of this anime, has done a superb job at adapting this manga. Second is. Kirogu Inu literally translates to Mushroom Dog. We followed this uh, rider who recently lost his dog. You know, this rider is a very introverted type of fella. The only person he essentially has an emotional connection with is this dog who recently passed away. Out of nowhere, this uh, mushroom pup pops out of the ground and just sort of like hangs out with him because he sees this guy is obviously you know, distraught by the loss of his dog. I'm not gonna lie to you, for most people, this anime is a bit of a nothing burger, but I just love Kinoko Ina. He's just a little guy. He's loyal, he's a super kind, and he lo definitely loves the uh, owner. He might, you know, mess around and be a little silly, a little goofball, but that's just little guy traits. He's just a little guy. I don't know, Hako. It follows this guy, Inomata, who is a badminton player, and this girl, Chinatsu, who is a basketball player, right? They go to this like sports school, I think. Chinatsu is like a varsity basketball player, you know? She's super popular, she's in magazines. Inomata is just sort of just your average Joe badminton player. Inomata has a crush on Chinatsu, wants to be uh, on the same level as Chinatsu. So essentially, Inomata could like ask her out without feeling super awkward. I'm not gonna lie to you, when it comes to romance anime, this is as vanilla as it gets. It's not necessarily too funny, it's not etchy at all, it's cute, but it's not too cute. It's very vanilla. But the thing is, my anime list has it as Telecom Animation Film who's doing this, but I think Wit Studio is putting a lot of work in this as well. And you can tell, man, the animation for a romance anime about badminton and a basketball occasionally looks really, really good. The thing with basketball, right, in anime, animators, mangakas, people in the anime industry, they're not sporty people, right? They, every time you see them trying to animate anything sports related, it just sort of looks weird. It doesn't look very realistic. And I don't know how the animation for the basketball, for the badminton, looks really realistic and really, really good. It's a bit crazy to recommend an, a, a romance anime for its animation, but I don't know Hako looks incredible and it has an incredible opening to boot, if that even matters. Yeah, you know, people like vanilla ice cream, so <laughs> if you like vanilla ice cream, I think you would love this anime. Magic Lumiere Magical Girls Incorporated. We follow Sakuragi who recently got into a startup company and this company is essentially just Magical Girl Incorporated, right? They, they get orders in, do Magical Girl battles and take care of like these monster gooey things that just pop up out of nowhere. It's another one of those animes where if you're a working man, you just appreciate this anime because the person is working at a good company. Sakuragi works in a startup. The little bits with like Oh, you're coming back from like, you know, going out of office and you want to eat some ramen first before you get to back to office? Makes total sense. I've done it multiple times. The fact that like everyone's super chill because the office is super small and it's a startup company makes sense. I have a soft spot 
for animes talking about the workplace and they work in a good condition. Aqua Trip. Aqua Trip is another Mahou Sojo anime. This time it follows Date Chizoko, who is a big Mahou Sojo fan. Right? Berry Blossom is the Mahou Sojo of a fake city in Niigata. Blossom fights the evil lieutenant, which is a uh, Chroma. And their battles sort of suck. They're very dull. They're not really interesting. Most of the time, it just ends up with like Blossom just beating the piss out of the bears with her bat. No magic being used whatsoever. Chrome obviously doesn't want this. Visually, is sort of boring and it sort of leads to a boring life. So Chrome wants to hire Date to sort of like give him uh, guidance to how to make a Maho Sojo battle look more interesting. Chrome is the main appeal of this anime because Chrome has some really, really good comedy bits. He's silly, he's a bit cunning. He has really, really, really good voice acting behind it. If you're into Mahou Shoujo, if you want good comedy, I think Aqua Trip might be worth a shot. Uh, Ranma One Half. Obviously, Ranma One Half is a re-adaptation from like 1980 something. If you don't know what Ranma One Half is, it follows Tendo. Somehow, some way, every time he gets uh, flushed by water, he becomes a girl. Every time he's flushed by hot water, he becomes a guy. Tendo is has like a like a contract to marry Akane. It's a very typical 1980s re-adaptation. Like, the art style is very similar to the re-adaptation for Urete Yasura. Ramon One Half is very known in like the LGBT community for being like their anime, right? Obviously, you understand why people in the LGBT community relate to Ramon One Half. And the comedy is okay. I feel like I'm watching it for the sake of historical value at this point. Punuro wa Kawaii Slime. Kotaru, when he was a child, as we were, right, right, as we all were, playing with a bunch of slime, you know, making blah blah blah, and suddenly out of the way, the slime became a cognizant bee. And when you're five years old, you see a slime that is a cognizant human being. It's like, oh my god, I just created life. Flash to the future, where Kotaru is in middle school, the slime is sort of annoying, because the slime is, she's a bit brain dead. Put it in a Wakawaii slime, it's very cute. It's sort of like super cute. It's adapted by Toho Animations, which will do a great adaptation. The main selling point in this anime is obviously just how cute the slime is. The kawaii slime. She's silly, she turns into these random forms. I personally really, really love her transformation uh, scene. Well, if you watch the first episodes and you find Puniru uh, adorable and you really, really like Puniru, I think it's definitely worth the watch. Somehow, some way, actually find her annoying. First of all, come fight me. Second of all, I think this is not the anime for you because it's just a kawaii anime, right? There's not really that much substance behind it. Chi uh, on the movement of the earth. This is honestly such a insane anime. This anime is about heliocentrism, which is the idea that the world or earth is revolving around the sun. This this anime takes place in like 15th century Poland, where people are, you know, very religious and people believe in the geocentric system, which was created by Ptolemy. I, I won't say too much, it's a very brutal anime. You get the sense that like these people, you wants to know the truth of the world, the, the torture scenes, the deaths in this anime. And you know, I've watched three episodes and it is just a very brutal anime. It's being done by Madhouse. And I think the adaptation is okay, but it's the fact that Madhouse would take on something like this. This is a very, or it's a very interesting story to, that, that's being told here in Chi. I guess a bit of a hint. It's formatted in a similar way to how To Your Eternity is. So you you essentially follow different characters um, as they slowly try to figure out heliocentrism. Nega Posey Angler. This is actually a very interesting anime. Uh, Sasaki, who's a college student who goes to a doctor and the doctor told him that he only has two years to live. The guy's not living the best life, right? He is in gambling debt, essentially in a shut-in until he meets like this group of guys who who's really really into fishing and Sasaki just tries out fishing I understand that the idea of like you know a person being in the calling list for death and 
fishing in Tokyo. There's not a lot of common ground there. It's a bit of a, a mixed match of a theme. But trying to preach to the audience that you should live every day to the fullest. You know, you should take it one day at a time. Uh, you know, you might die in two years. You might as well make those two years worth living. After like the first three episodes, it's sort of hinted that it's gonna have a giant emotional arc by the end of it. If you stick to this anime, it would give you a very, very emotional hit. Last but not least, Sumo Show. So, this anime, if you've been around the anime community, has been getting a lot of buzz. For the people who've been living under a rock, it's about a family. They recently lost a mother or a wife. Ten years have passed and the family's not doing that great emotionally. They sort of haven't recovered from the mom's death. Out of nowhere, a, a little child comes in and just be like, Hey, remember that wife you lost ten years ago? That's me. Um, essentially, the wife has got reincarnated into a new life. If you look at it from afar, right, it looks sort of terrible. Oh my god, this person's wife is a child. And the fact that this has a, a live action adaptation is a bit nuts to me. But it's more than that. This is actually a very dramatic anime story. The, the new life the wife leaves. She's in a, a single parent home and the mom is a, a bit of a terrible person. It's a very interesting dynamic. It's a very emotional anime. There's been three episodes out and every episode that has come out has put a tear on my eye. And how shocking of a, a, a well-written story this is despite how it sort of looks like smut on the outside. If you give this anime three episodes and you are a person who likes good storytelling and good drama, this is an anime that I think is a must watch. It's so misunderstood and it's so good. It's, it's a bit insane.